Check this out. It's what the streets want to know. Hell yeah. That real, that raw. The drug so powerful, it will make you sell the clothes off your back. It's straight drop, baby. Yeah, baby. From the people you want to hear it from. It's time to let the dog off the leash. Run, run, run. Chico, Chico, run, run. Chico, no. It's unleashed, reloaded. <laughs> Mike check one two one two. Mike check one two one two. My name is Dogface Calderon. This is Dogface TV live on YouTube. Normally, when I when I have guests, I try to give them a rip roaring, blazing motherfucking introduction. In this particular situation, my next two guests don't necessarily need that. They are they are men who stand up as men and present themselves and represent themselves as men on all things personal and business with them business is personal personal is business it's no difference they don't differentiate between what's business and what's personal you can get the same problem or the same issue or you can get the same judgment or the same sentence or the same level of discipline for anything that you do that may go against their sensibilities <laughs> press gang is in the motherfucking building big mo and Eastside Big Bird, aka Spud, is in the building. How y'all feel today, brothers? What's up? We're all right, brother. All right, now listen. I have been trying to get Spud in an interview type of situation for a long time, to no avail. I'm gonna use a couple of big words right here because it's appropriate. I have been trying to get Spud on the interview platform for the better part of what's it, 2024? Since about 2017, when we as kids, Silly V first introduced me to Spud, right? Uh, Spud is one of the, if, if you think I'm an angry, disagreeable motherfucker, <laughs> you ain't seen shit until you got a load of Spud. That's number one. Number two, I was not when I, I was I was not surprised when I found out that Spud and Big Big Mo were family, some related, same page. Because Big Mo, a.k.a. Watkins Hill, is a legend on the streets and inside of the federal and state penitentiary systems. Uh, when I found out that they knew each other, I said, God damn. That's literally what I said. <laughs> I said, God damn, this some shit. You got these two motherfuckers together all in one thing? Mm -mm, this ain't going to be right. Somebody going to get pressed. <laughs> Somebody gonna get pressed. Somebody ain't gonna make it to see the end of this motherfucking year. You hear me? That's how I felt. Oh, I'm joking, of course, but that's how I, that's how I took it. How y'all? How y'all brothers doing today? How y'all feel? We are all right, brother. How you doing? All right. So this is not an interview as much as it is going to be a conversation, because the reason why I want to have you two gentlemen on my platform is because. We're going to discuss. We're going to discuss a variety of different topics, and, but we're going to just start with just the behavior and mannerisms of black men and black women in the urban environment. And we're going to talk about how a lot of people who operate in the hood in the urban environment, a lot of them they operate without proper knowledge, proper guidance. They don't have no wisdom whatsoever because wisdom comes from the application of knowledge and and, and, and all that. They ain't got none of that kind of shit. Uh, we, we live in a society now in the hood where when I grew up, man, in the hood, I had a big homie. I had man, I had people who, if they weren't necessarily, uh, if they were not my men in the streets, they were they were people who helped shape and guide me, right? Because I I didn't just wake up one day knowing how to just go out and just do no crazy shit. It was, it was motherfuckers who I, I grew up watching and seeing, right? Who kind of, and I kind of like, I kind of like, I, I mimicked what they were doing and I, I looked at what they was doing and I, and I, I, I fed off that shit and, and a part of what, who they were helped turn me into the motherfucker I eventually became. And these are people who to this very day I still look up to and hold them in high regard. Nowadays in the urban environment, man, in the hood, in the ghetto, it's something slick when motherfuckers say, I ain't had no big homie. I ain't had no OG. Meaning, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a guide. I didn't have nobody older than me or wiser than me that I could look to 
right? And we we ain't glorifying gangster shit. We ain't glorifying hood shit. But since we talking about it, let's talk about it. Let's keep it real, right? You got a bunch of guys who saying, I ain't had no OG. I ain't had no big homie. And to me, when I hear that shit, being a street motherfucker myself, that sends a shockwave through my system. Because I can remember coming up in the street, bro. I learned what to do and what not to do from watching motherfuckers who was operating off principle and morals and, and street values and ethics and shit. Nowadays, motherfuckers call themselves gangsters and street niggas and they ain't got no experience whatsoever. They just stumbling into that shit like it's something clever. They, You got motherfuckers who, who, get, who, who jump off the porch and get to the streets. They ain't got no goals, no objectives. These niggas think that selling dope and robbing and carrying on, that's just supposed to be a slick lifestyle. They ain't got no end game to this shit. Motherfuckers just doing shit just to be motherfuckers doing it. And then, on top of that, once they get caught, they trying to tell on a nigga. They taking the low road. <laughs> they ain't taking the high road. They taking the low road on the motherfucker. Same niggas who say they ain't had no big homie or no OGs. As soon as they get caught, they taking the motherfucking low road. So I want to start this conversation because it's not an interview, it's a conversation. I want to start this conversation off by talking about just the streets and the condition of the streets. And Big Mo, I'm going to tap into you first and I'm going to get to you next, bud. I want you to explain to me because we, you from a different time. You've had the opportunity to live and see multiple generations of motherfuckers who claim to be street niggas and gangsters and thugs and whatever. I want you to talk about and draw a comparison, if you can, between how you grew up and what you saw and what you experienced to what you are seeing these the younger generation. And it's not a knock on just young guys because we got old niggas who won't fuck niggas shit too. There ain't just no young nigga conversation. But you ain't nothing changed, dog face. Tell me about it. it. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing changed from my time and this time except it's moved faster now. Everything is more out in the open now. But guys been doing the same thing for generations going back for eons, brother. You know, it's called self-preservation. And when you talking about self-preservation, I mean, who hasn't been trying to preserve themselves for, 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 for generations? You talking about this, this thing. I went to prison when I was 17. I started my prison bit at the age of 17. And snitch has been around since I've been around. So, I mean, ain't nothing changed. It's just faster. You right. just see it more because you got Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You got everybody reporting everything. You got all these cameras out here. And, and it's hard to hide now. It's a little bit different energy now. You got to know how to move out here. But people have been using the police for years. The mob used them. Street people used them. Everybody used the police. So mm -hmm. if you want to call people rats, everybody who's smart enough to get the police on their team is a rat. And mm -hmm. well, we're going to talk about that. Because that's just one of the many things that need to be discussed because we have people using the term rat, right? Using the term snitch, and then using that term very loosely without nothing connected to it whatsoever, right? So we need to really get into what what is a snitch? What is a, a rat? Snitch is me and you commit crimes together, and I uh -huh. get caught and I tell on you. If my mother or my neighbor Tell because I committed the crime, they not a stitch. They're a citizen. We, they ain't agreed to commit no crimes with me. Right. Only the people who agreed to commit crimes with me, and I inform on those people, am I a snitch? Mm -hmm. Right, that's what a snitch is. The snitch is me and you agree to go out and commit crimes, and we know we commit criminal activity, and we're selling drugs and whatever we're doing, and I give you up to the cops. Mm -hmm. That's snitching. I don't have to take the stand. If I give you up to the cops, I snitch on you. If I take the stand on you, then I took the stand on you. All that snitching. Outside of that, none of that stuff is snitching. Right. So let me ask you a question. So we know mob rules. We we watch all the mafia spud. We watching all these mafia movies. I know Spud got mafia movies on repeat. <laughs> spud got every goddamn mafia movie. I don't know what he do besides that. Besides that, right. You? <laughs> right. So listen. So my question to you is this. So in every mafia movie I've seen going back to the five families, the Lucky Lucianos and all that, specifically when we talk about what happened between the five Italian families uh, uh, all over New York versus what was going on uptown in Harlem. So Madam Sinclair Walker uh, was wow. a real 
Bumpy Johnson was a real person, right? We know that the Italian and the Irish and the Jewish mobsters, when they went to war with the with the brothers and sisters, the black people up in Harlem trying to take that territory, when they couldn't outgun them, when they couldn't outkill them, when they couldn't out murder them, when they couldn't outdo none of that, out none of that kind of shit, they then employed the police to use the police to arrest Madam Sinclair, right? They used the police to help aid the system trying to destroy the black mafia up in Harlem. They used their judges, the police, the judges, no, but see, the judges and prosecutors. They used them to try to defeat the black mafia. It's not in New that York. simple, though, dog Faith. Talk about it. It's not that simple because you got to understand Bumpy Johnson and them had the police on their payroll, too. It's just that they had the wrong shade of skin. So they chose to go with the mob opposed to Bumper Johnson and them because they, they wasn't Europeans or so-called white, white people. Mm -hmm. But they was definitely, definitely hit the post. Mm -hmm. Your phone breaking up, Big Mo. Your phone froze up. Spud, what you got to say about that, Spud? I all these niggas are police, bro. Say again, I couldn't hear you. All these niggas are police. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Spud, what you, I mean, growing up in the hood, man, I, I know you watch times change in the hood, bro. Um, what you, what you, did, did you have big homies or OGs when you were growing up who you kind of like came up under and they kind of like showed you the ropes in the hood? I kind of did and I kind of didn't. Right. Because I know about I know about the triple. They hey, hey. start off your friend, then they got you a worker, then they got you in a bonus position. So I ain't never allowed a nigga try to big home me. Right. Home me. I come from a strong family. Right. So I ain't never like always listen. I had motherfuckers I looked up to and took advice, but I ain't never stayed around because I seen niggas put niggas in trick bags with big homie shit too. Right. Nigga like your big homie as a squeeze play or as a distortion play. Right. Nigga give you something, take it back. Uh, now you work double. So me and my niggas, I grew up with, you know, that's all we had is us. Because we seen, we seen the demos. The big homie was laying down. Right. So we ain't want to never be one of them niggas that was under them. And that's an interesting point, too, bro, because that is one of the main problems. That's that's one of the main disconnects between the older generation and the younger generation. What you just said, I've never really heard anybody really articulate like that, bro. I've never heard anybody say they just simply said they didn't have any or they didn't have anybody around. But you just said, oh, yeah, we had older people around. But based on what my what I was seeing, I was seeing old niggas in the way, not wanting to relinquish. Yeah, they want to let me, nigga. Old nigga, come you want your spot, right? But nigga, yeah, you pony it down, nigga. Right. He run, he, he run the game. The game he came up on the young niggas. They he a little pup. Right. Not treating nigga with face value, because sometimes right. it's, 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 it's little guys in better position than an old guy. Yes, it is. So an uh, uh, older guy might think of an opportunity. Right. But not knowing this little guy season up. And you know what I mean? He's seasoned. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he might see the play before he even fit. Because sometimes it's an energy and a vibration. So a guy going to feel, he gonna, he going to feel the vibration, but he still, at the same time, he going to keep his defense. Because he know the, he know he might be on the squeeze game mm -hmm. or the pressure game, you know. Cause they, mm -hmm. you know guys be having hidden agendas and different plays. So mm -hmm. I ain't never really want no nigga big homie with me. I ain't never want no nigga over me. All right, Big Mo. I don't know if you were able to hear uh, Spud. Spud, I, I asked him about growing up in the hood and then growing up around people who he considered big homies. And one of the things that he articulated, and I said before that this is the first time I ever heard somebody articulate why they why they didn't 
or why they did that they didn't fuck with nobody who considered themselves a big homie or what what turned them away from that is because he saw people who will operate who were supposed to be big homies who were supposed to be OGs was really trying to use their status and their stature to run play and, and press a nigga down and squeeze a motherfucker versus trying to uplift him and give him some game. Right. Yeah, I didn't get I didn't get a big homie till I went to prison in 1980s. I got locked up in 86, went to prison in 87. That's when I first got my big homie. All right. my big homies before that, they did something to me or tried to play me like a sucker. Right. When I was nine, my first big homie broke my, my thumb because I let some guys, some older kids, ride me out of some drugs. So right. big homies really were big homies. They weren't trying to make me go to school. They weren't trying to make me do the right thing. They was putting bags in my hands and pistols in my hand. So I ain't never respect big homies. I always tried to squeeze my, I ended up robbing all my big homies when I got older. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ended up pistol whooping and robbing all my big homies. I didn't respect my big homie until I got to prison. And my big homie, Bruce, I started respecting guys after him because he tried to keep me out of trouble while I was in prison. It didn't work, but he tried, you know? Oh, a we, for effort. He get an A for effort. We, we know goddamn well it didn't work. <laughs> We're going to get that. <laughs> we know goddamn. But see, that, but see that, 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 that is a nuance about the whole big homie. Because the big homie slash OG conversation, that's the conversation that's being had across the country now when it relates when it when it comes to young black men and women specifically young black men growing up and not really having any guidance and guidance well, we ain't trying to get the, the key with press gang is we ain't trying to get these kids out here to do nothing they ain't doing you follow what i'm saying we we, we pushing music we don't care who you is we don't right. care who you is we hope you ain't doing nothing wrong we hope you going to school when i the coldest producer i ever heard music maker he go to Ohio State, he the press, he a producer for press game, his name Dirty Red. And we don't encourage street stuff. It, 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 mm -hmm. it ain't really, it don't get you nowhere. We've been there. We know it. Mm -hmm. We know what it gets you. This music can get you somewhere if you if you really believe in it, you put some time into it and energy into it. Because everybody ain't representing the city of Detroit on music. You got a lot of young people out here that need people to reach back and really actually be big homies, but in the music game today in Detroit, they don't even recognize guys that help them grow. Right. So listen, before we get way over there, big boy, I know you're chomping at the bitch to really get to that. Before we get to that, let's let's just talk about just so when you walk outside your door, and, and both of you guys still y'all operate in, in, in the hood. Y'all talk to people, y'all build with people, y'all have relationships across the board, right? Yeah, I like and, that. Man. What what is the main what's the main so if, if there's a problem inside the hood now with respect? Right, it used to be a time when I was coming up, it was like do's and don'ts, like wills and won'ts. It was like certain people and certain things and certain places were off limits and safe, even if it was some gangster shit jumped off. Nowadays, motherfuckers don't got no, ain't no chill, ain't no safe zone. Right, right. Explain to me why there is why the young people <coughs> running the streets, why they sit, why they why they throwing all the rules to the game away. Why are you just doing all kind of crazy shit without no rules or parameters? Because <laughs> each person make up their rules. Then they go. You, everybody got their own chess board, and everybody played the game different. Right, Spud? When I stay, bring that baby again. So the, the streets ain't got no rules no more, but it seems like to me, bro. Motherfuckers is doing whatever they doing. I mean, it ain't it ain't no honor. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say it's ever been no honor amongst thieves or honor amongst niggas in the street. But it used, used to be, it used to be, it used to be some kind of criteria. We I don't want to call it a rule, but it used to be some type of understanding and criteria about, like, for example, if I see you, man, you got a problem, and I see you out and you with your your girl and your kids. Right, I ain't. I'm a wink at you. You know why? You know I. I got you. you know what I'm saying, but I'm a hold up. I, I'm because I'm gonna catch you. We are gonna see each other because we operate in the same environment. So we are gonna see each other again. Nowadays, motherfuckers ain't even doing that. It's just straight on on site. What's the disconnect and what's the problem? The problem is. Now the problem is, man. It's fucked up out here. 
you got you got you got to you got to say yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to mind your own business, motherfuckers. And everybody else's business. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers always on Instagram. Take this Instagram down. Take this internet shit down. They don't know who really people is. They catfish on Instagram playing games. They troll them with guns. They doing all type of goofy ass shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody doing. They playing. They having fun. Boom, 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 boom. This is New America. Mm -hmm. New America. You get it? Yeah, I'm with you. America. It's the internet. Uh -huh. Take this internet shit now. You catch a nigga in jail. You catch a nigga. You know he ain't that person. Oh no, we definitely know that. We we. Yeah, you know I mean, we definitely know uh, that. The internet shit turn you to a whole different animal. I've seen people who I know are really mild tempered and really docile individuals. I see them like that get on Instagram and turn up on a nigga and they're gonna kill something. Oh, they never had no understanding remarks. Oh, yeah, that's a classic term. <laughs> that's a classic term that where listen, listen, these niggas don't even the term understanding mark, they don't even know what that means. Yeah, <laughs> they, it's it's real, real. yeah. Hey, listen, nigga, they, these niggas, these niggas ain't got not one scratch on them. We know you ain't you, you a warrior. How you a warrior and you ain't got not one scratch on you? You could have been no so everybody you you a warrior, but everybody they got a gun know. with a switch. So does having a gun does having does having a gun and being willing to use a gun, does that make you a real nigga? They say, well, no, that don't constitute real nothing. That they have, constitute have, being able to use a gun. Uh huh. That don't constitute being no real motherfucker. I to, a real motherfucker to me is when you can go in that room and close the door. Then you a real motherfucker. Win or lose, go in the room and close the door. Fuck that talking. Fuck all that playing or uh, any of that. Some niggas say I ain't finna shoot you. That's fine. We can we can play it any way you want to play it, but I prefer because I'm a more and I love my own as much as I can, and I ain't hate no nobody. I prefer to go in the room to teach you something. If you're a grown man, I teach you something. If you're a younger man, and I know you ain't got no win from the start, you just bumping your gums. I'm liable to try to talk to you and reason with you and get you because people did that with me when I was a baby. You know, I was a baby. I had some growing to do, and they allowed me to grow up. So I would definitely do that. I'm not trying to, you know, these younger guys don't know what a good butt whooping like look like, dogs. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't know what a yard ass whooping look like. Mm, no, I definitely don't. But uh, let's talk about just the music business with you for a second, since you are you one of the most controversial rappers in the city of Detroit, and you're the kind of rapper, and you're the kind of individual that a lot of a lot of the popular rappers, bro. Everybody know who you are, especially on the east side. I'm saying everybody because I hear your name being mentioned in east and west. But you're an east side guy, so I don't know no east side rapper who don't know you. I don't know nobody who in the music business, especially east side people who don't know you, who haven't heard of you. Whether they met you or not, it's a whole different thing. Uh, but what I do know about you is that a lot of people, and I'm going to keep it gangster. I'm just going to be real. A lot of motherfuckers don't want to be around you because they're afraid about what you're going to do and how you're going to move with them. Are you aware that you had that kind of reputation or you ain't aware of that? I'm, very, I'm, a, I'm scared what they might do with me. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I <ain't> no. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you. I'm not even going to ask you. I can't, you, can't, you can't never read my defense on my offense. Uh -huh. I play D and North. I play both sides of the balls. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if a person don't know me, post judge me and post me because I might be on bullshit. I might not. You know what I mean? Yo, I gotta, at, the end, at the end of the day, I got to protect myself. Go on my bed. Right. But I don't give a fuck about niggas' feelings. You know what I mean? I ain't never touched a nigga. I never fucked over a nigga. So if a nigga say I touched him and fucked over him, it's personal. They can't, I might woke up on the side of the bed. They judge me how I look. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't with all that whole shit, that fuzzy shit these niggas are. I mm -hmm. read these niggas from a mile away. So when I come in the room and boom, 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 and I know how these niggas work, and niggas send unsad blisses. Mm -hmm. So I, when I pull up, yeah, I got, I got, sometimes I got little niggas ready to pick a blitz up. Or I might be ready to send one. I know how this shit go. 
Right. But Spud, let me ask you a question, though, Spud. You do realize that your overall attitude and your behavior, that shit, you got most, mo you do realize that most people, majority of people who are in the position or who are in the position of control or who are in the position of like status inside the music business, you do right. realize that most of them are not street motherfuckers. And you do realize that your overall attitude might spook them off from wanting to deal with you. You realize right. that, right? I realize, right. What God got for me, he already got. It. So if a nigga gets spooked, he's a bitch. Get me away from him. I might sense, I might sense something else. He might get chewed. Car moving. I don't want some type of energy and niggas around me. Right. Only time I got cooked by a guy in a suit. Mm. Got you. Yeah. What you think about the current split? What you think about the current state of hip hop in the city of Detroit? Are you happy that 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 the streets are really having a having their way? Because before, uh, before. Uh, before we had the the guys who kind of like running the scene now, Detroit was known for the Eminems and the Big Shines and the Days Loafs, for example. They didn't right. Eminem, Days Loaf, and the Big Shines, they are good artists, but they didn't necessarily represent the street element of the city of Detroit. So if you hey, never hey, hey. if you never been to Detroit, uh you would think that, that the majority of how Detroit sounds is like Eminem and the Big Shine and Days Loaf. You don't, if you ain't never been to Detroit, you don't got no clue. But that ain't what really motherfuckers from Detroit really vibrate on. How do you feel about the street element of Detroit's rap sound making it nationwide now? I bet they put their work in. It's all about work. It, just, it was just as a cuff. You know what I mean? Detroit, you know what I mean? They really got overlooked. You know, Detroit, Detroit is a press, you know what I mean? Universal mm -hmm. all the way the world just because you're from Detroit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just it's time, it's just time. And a lot of people in position put a lot of work in to get in a position. They mm -hmm. went on that shit went on overnight success. Mm -hmm. They deserve that shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But is Eminem is Eminem one of your top five rappers from Detroit? No, well, I like I like his music, but uh. I don't like I don't like some of his ways. I don't like none of his ways. Uh -huh. I don't you, like some of his ways. Did you come I up like, listening to Eminem? Uh huh. You come up listening to Eminem? I came. I just I like the I like that track with him and Jay. You know that old track with Jay. Uh, Renegade. Yeah, you know you know what I mean when he was hot. But right. other than that, I ain't never go back Eminem CD. I never download him on my phone. Eminem ain't from Detroit. I I get it, but I'm just simply saying because he represents Detroit. You yeah, know? I never, I never, I, don't know. I never listen to you, YouTube. No, I, never, I thought East Side Big Bird represented Detroit. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, we're talking about Eminem. He purports to be a Detroiter. He represents himself as a Detroiter. So I want to know what impact, if any, Eminem's music, his life, his journey had on Burt being an artist, being a musician. No, no rap wise, sir. rap wise, I think more and more prevalent. Rappers today got with a bigger impact. The Babyface Rays, the Peasies, the um, Fotos, the Sides. You talking about for me? You talking about for me or for you? Yeah. No, for 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 Spud. I want to know: Was Eminem? A, 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 did he have? A, did his life, his journey, his music have an impact on you coming up when you was coming up in in, in rap game? No, nah, hell no. Nah. Uh -huh. nah. Big Mo. Big Mo, you spent an eternity inside the penitentiary. You went to penitentiary when Martin Luther King was still here. <laughs> when, so when, when when you was in prison, how many years did you do in total, Mo? Twenty six. Total state and fed. State and fed. Nineteen and a half in the state and seventy eight months in the fed joint. All right. So when when you were coming up right you had the opportunity to watch the streets change from inside a prison cell you were hearing different stories you were hearing about different things that were happening that you were like well when i was coming up we we, we didn't play it like that that shit a little bit too well when you was in prison were you concerned about even just from not even just from a negative street perspective but when you were in prison and you were hearing the stories about the behaviors that was being dis dis distributed and displayed amongst young black men and women in, in out in the street were you ever like, damn, what the fuck going on out there? What, what, how, what no. I was trapped in a bubble for 26 years, man. I spent over 12 years in, in solitary confinement. 
I wasn't mm. thinking about no street. I was busy fighting the police every day. I wasn't thinking mm. about no no streets and nothing else. And then when I came out of here, it was a culture shock. You know, when you when you've been in prison that long, and then you hit the streets. And like I say, everything is moving so fast now. Everything is moving so fast. That's why they quick to pick up guns now because everything is too fast. Guys ain't even got time to fight. I'm trying to tell you, that's that's the point I was making. Everything is so fast. People ain't got time to stop and even look and see what the hell going on on around them. They too busy and they. People, I just seen two sisters go out to dinner. And the whole time they sit out to dinner. They watch his Facebook. They never had a conversation going. I said that. You froze up, Big Mo. That nigga gone. Bro, I think I just shit. Uh -huh. My man, we was laughing the whole time at him. Two uh -huh. gorgeous sisters. They never even had a conversation. They stayed in their phone the whole meal. What we up against? That's what the fuck are idiots. They can't think past go. No. They don't give a fuck and they can't think. That's how I uh -huh. think about society. Okay. I walked out so to listen, the world. Hey, hey, Big Mo, I want you to go in there. Cowards, with... idiots. Hey, and, hey, and, hey. And, and I don't know what else to call them. They okay, scared so to tell the truth. They scared to do anything. All right. Hey, you tuned in to Dogface TV, sponsored by Joe Algie, man. Give me one second. We'll be right back. Are you open it up? Mike check one two one two. You tuned into the best. Hey, listen, we back this dog face TV on YouTube. I got press gang in the building. Big Mo, aka the biggest in the building, aka Watkins Hill in the building, and we got East Side Spud in the building. Hey, listen, it's press gang official. Uh, when I left off by saying I was talking to, to Spud just about his overall, the overall view that people that the artists in the city of Detroit. When I hear about Spud being talked about. It's almost never in the positive fashion. It is always Spud is a disagreeable motherfucker who hard to work with. My thing is, Spud, what is it about the rap game that is so distasteful to you to where you feel like that you ain't got to play the game, you feel like that you ain't got to do what the other rappers be doing? You ain't got to get along. It ain't even that, right? You know what I mean? If you tapped in, we tapped in. Other than that, I play like the yard. I get I get a guy three feet, you give me three feet. Ain't nothing personal. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know I don't know who a guy know who he affiliated connected to. Mm -hmm. I ain't right. worried about the back door. I don't worry about the triple. All right, that's the, the rap game is the most dirtiest game it is. Yeah, I always say that. I always say whenever I talk to somebody, whenever I'm consulting somebody, I always tell well, them the cool that, niggas did. Yeah, I, I always say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rap game dirty on the street. I, I, I ain't cover this shit to, uh, you know, like when I do business with a guy, business, we do business, you know, music all that, he know me, you know what I'm saying? I know his crew, I know his guys, number I know what I'm dealing with. Right. You hear me? If I don't know a guy, like, I, don't know, I don't know what Nick Cake was. They would have switches. Right. I know I could be I know I could be number man magma food. You hear me? Right. But they also know they could be magma food. Right. See, it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing personal. You hear me? I and I hate if I ever mean anybody any harm or disrespect, you hear me? Especially if a guy don't owe me no money. We all right. Right. I'm gonna get my stove bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I smoke, yeah, that's so bad. Right. That that's so bad. Don't come back right. It's going to be a problem. You hear me? Yeah, other than that, you know, don't come to my, don't come to my, don't come to me asking me for no beats. None, boom, 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 cause all my work I did, I paid for. Or, right, you know, if any brother looked out for me, I did something I never turned my back. I got eight and assists. You hear me? Mm -hmm. You know, my motto, FN, fuck niggas, really. You know, my mm -hmm. guys, my guys. And I keep them put up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they don't and they don't know none of these guys. Mm -hmm. And I like it like that, because I, I know what I'm up against. Mm -hmm. And I know how these niggas moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So let's let me ask you another question, Spud. 
when when it comes to when it comes to the rappers in the city of Detroit, especially people who we're most familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. You 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 know most of them, especially most of the ones who really have emotion right now. Have you ever? Do you get offended when you listen to a rapper and you know, even even if they are a good rapper and it's a good song, if you know that a rapper ain't really what he talking about, if he really ain't laying like what he the shit he be saying on, on record, does if you know that he not really as real as the what he trying to portray on the record, does that does that bother you? Will that prevent no. you from liking the song? No, it's entertaining. No, I like it. I might like it. I might laugh and smirk to myself. Right. Yeah, I still like to uh, I just smirk to myself. Right. And I keep all my comments to myself. Right. Yeah, because I don't want to defend in because sometimes our thoughts, I might offend somebody saying something. Cause we all got thoughts and opinion. But sometimes some people who there are, their opinion, opinion can be offensive. You hear me? Mm -hmm. So if I do hear something right, I do I just I just smirk like no you dance you because we don't have it. Right, it's loud. Yeah, you know I mean? right. Absolutely. Because I don't want to start no problem with no individual, right? If they really about my family, and not especially because I'm not, I'm not, a lot of these guys don't even know me, and I don't know them. So it's, I ain't never got no problem with no guy. You know what I mean? It's just like sometimes when I do business, like with some of these producers, I done pay for beats, they done re rock the beat, get sold to the three or four people. Do all type of shit. I got finesse mm -hmm. in some of these rooms, mm -hmm. and I don't know when I go in the room. I don't know who's gonna be in this room. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I step out, you hear me? I got my head on my swivel. You get it? I don't yeah, know who's in this room, and the, and the, and the trick bag. I still got guys owe me beats. I still I, I still got what's the nigga name? Joe McFash. The nigga still owe me an old five dollar deposit. From from back then, yeah. Oh, Joy, Joy got Joy got a bag supposed to come back to you, huh? Joy got a bag that's supposed to come back to you. Man, it's just some old shit, right? Mhm. Mm this example. It's an example. Mhm. Mm but dog might not know, like when he face me, like he don't know when he might, like you know, he might, I might let it go, but I might stand on that shit. Mhm. Mm I'm, I'm gonna make a phone call to Joe. Tell Joe get that bag. He might forget. <laughs> no, he might forget. It was a Joe, collective. Joe, Joe don't but forget. That. It, it, that's just an example, right? Uh huh. Cause I, I I let a guy play and get up one, or he think he finesse up, and it might be 10, 20 years ago. You know hear I me? Mean? Mm hmm. Like I feel like a guy up one. Oh, you know what I mean? You know, that's yeah. like you owe, a guy owe you some money, right? And he he around you every day, right? Right. He never said nothing about the money he owed you. <laughs> no, see, I, I, I'm a particular type of person. You, no, you he said me too. Yeah, that's I one of my biggest, my, my biggest, look at my you biggest peak. My biggest peak. I got on my books, and I still got my all my books. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Look, you tuned into the best of dog face TV on YouTube. Big Mo, what's the word with you, fella? How you feel? Nothing much. Just listen to you and spoil and chop it up. You came home from prison after doing 26 years right? Uh, in state and in the federal penitentiary system. You came home. What was the biggest culture shock for you? Oh, uh, me and Nickel. The Wait. women. Hey, I love Nickel. The women. The women were the biggest shock for you. Tell me about what, what, what about the women had changed? They were standing on more business than the men. Uh-huh. They, they was moving more aggressive than the men on getting it bad. Right. They weren't concerned with nothing but getting that bang. That's it. And when you came home, you found that the men weren't necessarily focused on the shit they supposed to be focused on. They focusing on chasing the women. And they should be focused on chasing the bag like the women chasing the bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the culture shit. It used to be with my day. That's all men thought about and women came second. Right. Hey, listen, oh, nigga. They're going to be screwed up. <laughs> no, I tell the motherfucking truth. I'm like you, dog face. I don't give a fuck what nobody think because ain't nobody gonna do shit to me. In the real world, nigga. In the real world, in this world we walk in right now, ain't nobody gonna do shit. Right. So I tell the truth. 
Right. So Big Mo, like, so listen, you and Spud had like the funniest relationship in the world, bro. So listen, I, my question to you is, man, what what does being around Spud? What 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 energy does that give you, man? You know what I'm saying? Because it's some shit. I bro. get good. I real talk. I get good energy from being being around Spud because Spud is a person that's always Spud. Right. He's raw, uncut, unfiltered. He is who he is. I don't try to change him. But none of that shit. A lot of motherfuckers can't handle because they soft. Right. You can't be no soft, fudgy, fake, wannabe ass gangster nigga in the room with him because he know you ain't that. So stop playing. Right. He know the real ones from the fake ones. That's what it means. I don't even know. I've been around these as well like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. If I walk in the room with a nigga, you know what I'm saying? This nigga perpetrated out, right? Right. But I just left this nigga, but had the lids. I <laughs> go around nigga perpetrated out, he got, he got hats. Right. You see, they think if you just run, you out here shooting up houses and shooting up kids that you something special. I ain't impressed by that shit. I he think y'all a bunch of pussy motherfuckers. He just get them talking and run off at the mouth. He don't stop. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. fuck that's that. why this guy, you know what I'm telling you, he's got fucked up, bro. <laughs> that, that, I might be a fucked up. Hey, listen, so listen. So it's funny because everybody say I'm fucked up. Like, everybody who I come in contact with, bro, if you don't really, I, I got to say, if you don't love me, you ain't going to like me. That's right. what I've been saying that for before I came home. Right. If you don't love me, you ain't gonna understand me. If you don't love me, you ain't gonna like me. I ain't for everybody. And that's that's a, that, that, that's a solid fact. But I, I'm happy when the motherfucker don't like me, bro, because there's so much whole shit going on. It keeps and, right like, from you. It's so much bad behavior being exhibited, man. And, and look, look, let me tell you something. When I get the energy of a nigga, right? Right. You hear me? Like I pick up, like I play the backfield. I used to have to block for the quarterback. You get what I'm saying? So I, I, but I get the energy from a nigga, right? When I walk in the room, soup that bitch out, and I know who I got with me and who, and the power of this phone. I feel like I'm all right because I know what I know, and not only that, I got more love than I got hate. Right. So that's why I, I will power the room anyway. And all the gospel will get back to me. So mm. it'll put me up one. You get it? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a chessboard. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sit back and watch movies. I watch Spartans. The Warriors. Right. <laughs> I question you, Big Mo. You came home. It's a culture shock. It's a bunch of different shit that's different than it was before you left the street, man. But you've been out here moving and grooving, doing your thing, rebuilding yourself, reestablishing yourself, right? What are some? Of, what are some of? If it to, to anybody who's watching this interview, who watching, who listening to this conversation, who may watch this conversation today or tomorrow, what do you? What's the best advice that you can give somebody who operate in the street right now, bro? If they really no. full blown in the street, what's the best advice you can give them right now? Slow the fuck down. That's the best advice we got for you. Hell yeah, you better slow the fuck down, motherfucker, because the fans watching, everybody else watching. That's what I've been saying the whole interview. You living in a different time now. You can't move like you used to move. You can't move like you used to move. I can give you some stories about this shit, but don't get killed, nigga. Did you hear me? Right. Dog face. I give well, some stories about that, this shit. How these motherfuckers don't operate. Get killed, nigga. How these fans operate and how these niggas operate out here. I can tell you some stories, bro. They ain't got to tell a motherfucker. I ain't got to tell on you, bro. A motherfucker come make a deal with you, a, a regular deal, and the fans can be on him. He can be serving the fans, not even know they can fans. There's so many ways they can get you nowadays, bro. You gotta, you gotta be on point. Cause I'm telling you, that's how they got me, bro. That's how I got indicted. That's how I went to prison with the feds, bro. My man Otto Hiller, Hiller Lear, who was a Moor, was was dropping it to me. This is all documented records, dropping it to me, and I was dropping it to a motherfucker. I didn't even know it was the feds, bro. And they came and arrested my ass and arrested his ass too. Mm. They charged him with what they caught in his house, and they charged me with the sales I made. 
Motherfucker ain't got to tell on you, bro. This is real documented shit. I'm 039 till I die. Right. That's my federal number. 20443039. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful out here. You got to take your time. Don't be in a rush to do nothing. Everybody in a rush now. Everybody mm -hmm. in a rush to make money. Everybody rush to come up. And you rush up on your own destruction. You know, our prophet tell us that. All the prophets tell you about people who rush up on their own destruction. You got to take your time and fall back and see what's going on, then move out. Especially mm -hmm. these boys in this music industry. Well, that's another question I wanted to go down and roll with you, right? So the music business is is one of the most prominent things. It's one of the, it, it is, like, it used to be, like, like Biggie Small say, in the hood, you either get a wicked jump shot, slinging crack rock, or you in the music business, right? The music business has allowed young black men from the inner city who have minimal education, minimum skill to really kind of change their lives, bro. What do you feel about how the music industry nowadays is promoting and propagating the destruction of our own kind? How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's horrible for two reasons. The first reason is these brothers is getting into the music industry without anything, knowing anything about it. They don't have their, 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 their uh, receipts for none of their music when they go in studios. So first off, you got to understand that music is intellectual property. That's the first thing you got to understand about music. So the first thing you want to do is have your receipt book set up. You want to have your LLC set up for your record company. And when you go in these studios, you want to actually get paid them for, for the work they actually do and get receipts for it through your company showing that you actually got a viable business. And a lot of people don't understand the music business, so that's why they fail at it. It's not even about you um, having a great song. It's about you doing business in music. And a lot of people don't do business, and that's where they fell at. And a lot of things got to do with relationships, like he was telling Spud and saying, why don't guys want to mess with him in the city and this and that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you the same question. Why don't why do you feel like what you think is what you how what do you feel that this holding Spud back? Because he got the talent, he has right. the charisma. No, he knows how no, to because move. you gotta pick sides. Mm -hmm. These guys in this game is requiring you to pick sides. They ain't be signing you to come dropping the check on you saying come to get guys that they know help put them on or did songs with them or really got a street reputation. They ain't come picking him up. Why would they? Mm -hmm. When you do that, you got to choose sides. Ain't nobody choosing no sides. Why would I choose sides? Why would I want my nephew to choose sides? He's standing on his own. He ain't got to choose no sides. He ain't got to sign with nobody or be on nobody's team. He on his team. He speak for his motherfucking self. Right. His, what he did for the city of Detroit on the east side of Detroit on the music tip, speak for itself. If a motherfucker's ain't shouting that out and recognizing that, then that's on them, bro. We ain't tripping. Ain't nobody using nobody else to come up. We don't need no other motherfucker to come up. We live in our lives every day. They live in their lives every day. But they know what it is, though, on the east side of Detroit. If you're from the east side, you know what it is. If right. you're really from the east side of Detroit, you ain't faking like you're from the east side. Right, right. You know, just as best as Dog Face TV, a.k.a. Press Gang is the motherfucking building, man. Big, Big Mo, how you feel about the success? Because you had an opportunity to see it all, bro. Detroit is really going crazy across the country now. We have some of the dopest artists, some of the most recognizable faces in the music business. How do you feel about the success that Detroit is experiencing right now? I love it. I love it. I love it for Sada Baby, for Photo Doug, for uh, Skiller Baby, for uh, any other uh, Babyface Ray, Peasy, all I love for all of Peasy, my favorite Detroit artists, hands down. That's who, that's who I fuck with as far as, you know, all artists that's blown right now, that's the really blown, that's my favorite Detroit artist. I fuck with him, you know? Right, right. And then my man did my man Bobby Christian speak high of him, high, highly of him? So that's enough for me, you know. Mm, shout out to Bob Rocket Management. You tuned into the best dog face TV on YouTube. Press gang is in the building. Big Mo, Detroit is uh, Detroit at any given time, Detroit can explode with all kinds of shit. It, it, it don't take much to make Detroit to turn Detroit into gangland. It never has taken much to turn, turn Detroit into gangland. I asked you earlier, what advice would you give somebody who, who's in the street? I'm gonna ask you that question again. I want you to give me, I want you to give me three pieces of advice that you would give somebody who in the street and who operate in the street right now. What advice would you give them besides obviously get out 
as soon as you can or don't get even get in it if you don't have to right right but i told him i told him patience it's it's a movie out i read a book when i was in prison called shogun it was by james claybell and they just made a movie out of it so hulu it's called shogun and it's about a lord Taganaga, and he will become he was trying to become shogunate of japan right mm -hmm. and it showed how he patiently all through the movie he, how he patiently waited for these things to happen he didn't try to force them he didn't try to you can't force the game you got to be patiently let the game come to you all the guys that you know in the game that really came up they built from scratch and they took their time and did it over time they didn't do it in a one day and when you try to rush and make a deal or make the big deal or be involved in stuff you shouldn't have, or with people you shouldn't be involved in you come up dead or you end up taking losses you shouldn't lost you shouldn't take Mm hmm absolutely so when i say patience a lot goes with being patient bro that guy's going to be careful who you fuck with that means that you picking the right people to fuck with because you didn't evaluate and check them out and made sure that they jacket was neat and if they jacket wasn't neat you got to distance yourself from them you ain't got to be in their business you ain't got to talk about them or none of that just distance yourself don't fuck with them it's a lot of little things you can do because when you're in the game you don't want to create conflict neither Bodies don't make money. Right, absolutely. Yeah, bodies right. make blood. That's it. How do you feel? How do you feel about the relationship that black men and black women have in, in the urban environment? Now, or just, just as, as a whole now, do you feel like we're in a healthy space with our women? Or do no. You feel, okay. I know Tell we not. About Let's talk I about know it. we not. I know we're not in the healthy state with our women because we listen, I had to learn how to be a good father. And I'm still learning every day how to be a good father. So it ain't no such thing as being in a healthy it ain't a healthy state unless you're doing the right thing by your woman and your family that's mm -hmm. what makes it healthy if you ain't doing right by your woman and your family it ain't healthy like i'm learning not to keep secrets from my woman it took me a long time to get there because i ain't never trusted no woman so mm -hmm. a, a, a big part of it is about how much you're willing to trust the person you with that's the big part of having a healthy relationship and when you do have disagreements being able to talk to so mm -hmm. that's why the states about all our relationships for the most part, it's unhealthy because we don't know how to communicate. And it's not important about what the other person feeling. Mm -hmm. So until people change the way they think and feel about people, you're going to keep having those unhealthy states. And then right. people chasing the wrong things, dog face. Right. Each right. person get with each other for the wrong reasons. Right. Yeah, you get with me because I'm, I'm a successful. That ain't no reason to get with no man. Right. That same successful man could beat you in the dark. Right. Absolutely. Or, or, God for, or God forbid, rape a child, rape one of your children or something, or, or some horrible, or not just be there. That's that's just as worse. Just not being there is just as worse. So you you, you chasing the person with a bag for what? Because they can provide? And then you're not going to end up being there if they give you too much money because you're going to be too busy living. Mm. Right, because most women that got money don't sit there and take care of their children all day. Mama, cousins, sisters, brothers, somebody else take it. And if they got careers, it's really hard for women to do it. And I'm not doubting women that got careers. I know because my girl work. And by her working, it's hard for her to be there with her child when she's at work. That's just reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the state of affairs in America when it comes to relationships, especially in our community, man, the values is just gone. There ain't no standards. Family don't matter no more. The people you with don't matter no more. It's just bad. So what what can we do as men? Because so there's a there's a disconnect between not just black men and black women in the urban environment. There's a disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation. Where you have the older generation feel like feels like the younger generation don't listen, don't take the advice. You have the younger generation feel like. The old motherfuckers ain't talking about nothing and only want to use them for whatever they can use them for because they're young and actually moving around. No, uh, because we're the, we're the generation of scammers and schemers. Uh huh. And when you're the generation of scammers and schemers, nobody can look at the, the family values anymore mm -hmm. because they're too busy trying to get ahead. How do, how, how, if I'm hungry and starving, how can I be worried about God? How can I be worried about my, my brother and what's happening with his life around the corner? Because I'm starving, I'm hungry. I can't, I can't, I can't uh, you know, I can't, I can't attain to, to, to the, the highest heights if I'm starving. 
And, and people can starve for all kinds of things. It don't have to, have to be financial starvation. Because I told you, you got brothers and sisters that's successfully financially stable and they still starving because the person they with is lacking. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it get deep, bro. That's why I, I try to, you know, I, I don't think it's really nothing we can do, dog face. I think each individual got to do it on their own. I don't think it's nothing we go do collectively. What can you do collectively on the whole? Each individual got to take it up on themselves to want something better for themselves. Yeah, I mean, so I, I've had this conversation many times with different people, right? And we just talk about the overall state of just black people here in this country. We're on, we, we're, we're, we're on too many different pages, right? You have people, you have, listen, even when it comes to the things that, that are best for us as a people, we can't even decide. We're, we're the only nationality of people on this planet who there is no general consensus amongst us about what direction we're supposed to be traveling towards the things that are best for us. We I agree. We fight. I agree. We fight. We can't even we, we can't even reach a general consensus about the best course of action and what's best for us. You got we're not like, equally yoked as a people, bro. We don't have all these things in common. We don't even have the same goals, ambitions, and desires as a people. See, for you to be like that, you got to go back. Okay, let's go back. Let's I'm gonna give you a, a real quick example, right? Let's take the People like to talk about the Hebrew nation, the Jews that they call themselves Jews today. That's the Hebrew nation I'm talking about. The ones over there next to Palestine and Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. They had a common goal when they built that state. When they built the state of Israel, they had a common goal. Mm -hmm. The people of Israel did. So that lady came over here, got her $50 billion, and got them the weapons they need to sustain a state. They had a common goal, a common objective as a people. Mm -hmm. And from that, they built upward and outward. Mm -hmm. We don't have a common goal, and we never have since slavery, had a common goal, a common objective to build on since the Civil War, since, since the Civil Rights Movement happened. Mm -hmm. What have we had in common since the Civil Rights Movement? No, we, so first of all, we, we, we like you just said, we have, we have, we have in our minds grown upward and outward. We've the, the more open this society has become, and the more inviting and embracing more division. But with black people, the more we as people have been divided against and amongst ourselves. So now right. you, you have you have you have black people who feel like who who let, listen. The issue is like you just said it. If if you don't understand the commonality that exists between you and the, another person, you can never love and appreciate that person. Because you don't see yourself in that person. If you don't, right? Like, that, that's just if we don't see ourselves in our women. No, we don't see ourselves in our women, so we're not going to give our women the best we have to give them. Now you getting where I'm going? They don't. We don't see it as a people. Because you're talking about as a people, mm -hmm. as a people, maybe as individuals. So men can say, "Yeah, I see it, I see it," but as a people, we don't see it, bro. We don't see it at all. We don't see it as a people. You hit it on the head. Right. You hit it on the head. Mm -hmm. And because we don't see it as a people, we are not going to come together as a people. We don't have nothing to, to come together for. What has happened to motivate us to come together as a whole? What single um, life-changing event since slavery has happened in our world outside the civil rights movement, right? What has happened to break us together and say, oh, no, we're going to fight for each other? What has happened? Nothing. 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 And that, that that is an indictment, and that is a that, that is a that is a telling story, and which is right that it would take something like that, mm. right that it would take something so life altering and so life changing to bring us together that that it would have to be a life changing thing for everybody to say enough is enough, we're done with this. It had to be something so drastic, bro, and that's sad that it had to be that, but that's what it would take. Mm. For us to even care about our own women and children, it would take that. As a whole, as a whole, I told you, I'm just learning how to take care of my children. Mm -hmm. what and, you, I'm 50, and I'm 55. What you just said was was right and exact. When we when we were when we when we were in, when we were enslaved and we were going through the Jim Crow segregated South, right? There was a common. We had a common enemy. We knew who our enemy was. Our right. enemy was open and in our face. And we right. were 
forced by circumstance to stand together for our own survival. Now, right. the greatest trick the white man ever did was make you believe that you were free and to convince you that, that, that your own brother and your sister are not necessary. Yeah, but you listen to me. The key, the key to it is that he did trick us. The key to it is that he didn't even have to trick us. See, a lot of brothers don't get that. He ain't got to trick you. All he got to do is lock you up. All he got to do is give you a prison number. If he give you a prison number, then guess what? Now you a slave again. They still going nuts. Yes. They still going nuts. Yeah, we're going, we kick, we kick, we kick, we kick an ism right now. We're kicking big fat, big Burke. It's in the building. East Sass, aka East Sass Spud. Uh, Spud, you back in the building now, man. Hey, listen, I, you can't just be walking in out the interview like that. I know you got business to take care of, brother, but you got to, you got to stand fast, like Big Mo would say. Big Mo, tell us this young motherfucker something, Big Mo. We can't, it is Big Mo. You, you, how many headaches has Spud given you since you've been home? Tell the truth. You ain't got, you ain't got, eat, tell oh, the you. Truth. A, a, a whole lot of them motherfuckers. He give them to me every motherfucking day. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world, though. He keep me on my toes. Right. I feel like I'm on the yard when I'm around Spud and all these all these brothers. All these this, younger, oh, I, I feel like I'm right at home on the yard. They don't bother me, none of them. Right. So listen, listen. Let's kick some real game right here. We we mentioned the yard a couple of different times. I always say, bro, it, I always say I live by penitentiary rules, even though I'm free. It is certain shit I ain't gonna do. It's certain shit that I'm not gonna say, even if I'm thinking it, right? When you when you're on a prison yard, man, when you're on a big yard, the back 40, right? I don't give a fuck how much of a killer you is or how gangster you say you are. There's certain things that you ain't gonna say, there's certain things you ain't gonna participate in, there's certain things you don't even want your name associated with because you know the problems that can come immediately from being involved with certain shit. That is one thing, and that, 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 that is a lesson that I think that motherfuckers out here in the street can learn from. Because oh, motherfuckers, they involve themselves, they involve themselves, and Spud said it earlier, motherfuckers do not know how to mind their own business. That's but, what the yard teach you, to shut not, the fuck up or get killed. Yeah, and then listen, if you're going to say it, you got to stand on it, right? You got these motherfuckers nowadays, they'll say something about you, and then when they see you, they'll be surprised that you feel some kind of way about them. They'll do more than that. Yeah, they'd be surprised. A motherfucker go on social media, but a motherfucker call you a bitch on social media, and then when they see you, they surprised about you choking their ass down to the ground. They surprised, like, well, what, 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 that was social media. No, Where nigga. It come from? Yeah. Yeah. What? 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 Man, that's just man. You, mother, man, you, you, man, you, you out cold. Uh, you penitentiary, nigga. You, you, you fucked up. You institutionalized. No, no, I ain't, nigga. See, because I'm not gonna say nothing about you that I'm not gonna stand on, whether right. I'm right or wrong. If I say it, I'm gonna stand on it. I swear for Jesus <laughs> and Muhammad and, and every other holy motherfucker. I say a bunch of shit about motherfuckers that I know that nigga don't like. When well, I, I see, try, I try not to say shit on street shit because it'll get you oh, killed or you have to kill a motherfucker. Because oh, yeah. I'm not gonna let you say what you want to say. Hey, the streets fucked up. So ain't no, ain't no. Ain't, what I know about this shit here now, ain't no rules to this shit. It's every man for itself out here. What you better do is just get you a crew, a motherfucker you understanding with, and you, you rock with them. Everybody else is food. Everybody else can get the business. That's well, you supposed to have your circle. Your circle supposed to stay your circle. Then you don't get caught up in the whole shit. Well, hey, Big Mo, these motherfuckers get caught up in the whole shit because their circles ain't tight, and mm -hmm. their circles, they circles is full of bitch ass niggas in their circle. This circles ain't solid. These circles, they know they ain't no 360 degree circle. These niggas is wobbly. These niggas are oval shaped. These niggas like an egg. <laughs> These niggas like an egg. They rolling like an egg. They ain't rolling like no circle. I don't you know think that's why they don't come fuck with real east side motherfuckers? <sighs> Let me just tell you this, right? I'm gonna say some shit that's gonna be wildly unpopular. This is gonna be wildly, and I won't I won't spoil it. I want you to check me out, spoil it. Faux Two Doug just do a concert where he had the Faux Two Dugs and Friends, where he brought Team East Side and Vez them out. And he brought double cash out. We know about the history of the falling out they had, the, the competitive nature of the East versus West with double cash out and team he's had, and then the altercation they got into at the black party about a decade ago. So we knew it kind of like drove a wedge between East Side and West Side in the same way the Blade Icewood and Street Lord thing drew a wedge between the East Side Cheddar Boy. That drew a wedge between East Side and West Side as well, right? We know that Detroit is East Side, West Side. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. It's, it's gonna always be east side, west side, right? 
So when Doug gave that spotlight to, like he, like Doug said, and this is the one thing I agree with him on. He said, my homeboys, my niggas, my East, East side was going to be there anyway. I fuck with all these East side niggas who really winning right now. I didn't have to extend an olive branch to let Doughboy Cash out come out and get off on my platform. I'm saying that if Doughboy's cash out, when they had that lane with Jeezy, they would have never given East side niggas that spotlight at a concert like that. They would have never done it. And I'm saying this too. This also will be unpopular, right? I'm saying that when the West Side had control of the rap game, the Big Sean, the Doughboy Cash Out, the H and I C, and all them, when they had control of, of the rap game in the city of Detroit, when you talk about Detroit, you talk about the West Side. What none of them asked to put that beef down with the East Side. What none of them being asked to squash that shit, be bigger men. But as soon as the East Side start winning on a major level, now the East Side is being asked to be the bigger men. Y'all stop that shit. Y'all stop being territorial. Y'all stop doing that shit. And I'm like, what was that same energy at when the West Side had control of this motherfucker? Y'all wouldn't ask them niggas to be the bigger men. Y'all wouldn't ask them niggas nothing. See, people can't think. They let, see, it's all about, it's conquering divide. You hear me? Mm. Like, my enemy will not be your enemy. So I'm not trying to make my enemy your enemy. You get it? Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of guys like putting gas in their personal beef and get mad when somebody else is associating with them. Mm -hmm. You get it? Now, I, I'm an East Side nigga for sure. You hear me? Like, I, I fuck with the, the West Side too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying? But so I can't be biased because the West Side invited me to the, to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Out. J East Tate. Side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't be fake. I got niggas, I got niggas by me in the slums. Nigga, let me go home with, with all my buddy, whatever I got, my whole kid. With mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Niggas, I know true niggas, and they from the West Side. Mm -hmm. They're my guys. So I could never cock them to say, fuck this or fuck that. Yeah, fuck these parties, individuals, personal individuals, for that, whatever, whatever. But the ones that my loved ones I fuck with from the genuine, I can't cock them to that, that East Side, West Side shit. I got West Side <laughs> niggas be with me. And I got East Side niggas, and I be West. So when you throw, you conquer the bag, you throw yourself in the trick bag. Cause you got the West Side niggas saying you just said fuck West Side. And I told you, press game fuck with both sides, East and West Side motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Heavy. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. That's the difference. Press game fuck with East Side and West Side motherfuckers. Look, you got heavy something heavy. personal going on. That's you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. But when they make it universal. You know what I mean? That's when it's getting switched. That's when they get a trick bag. Mm -hmm. That's why I never. That's why I never dropped no sets. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Because I don't know who see that. Because it might be another thing you ain't got nothing to do with to see that shit. That mm -hmm. pick up that message, You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got to be kept conscious and careful what you do and put it in the universe. Mm -hmm. you, you put yourself in a trick bag. You talking about fuck the West Side, nigga, now you on the West Side Club, and you need niggas backyard. And these niggas put, these niggas throw your ass in the trick bag. Oh, you say fuck the East Side niggas. You thought you up here partying, and these niggas backyard, and now your ass getting in the trick bag. Mm hmm. <laughs> right. You can't do that whole shit. You know what I mean? Right. Keep your fucking mouth shut. If y'all rules, remember, because only y'all you ain't finna say fuck no East Side or West Side niggas, because somebody gonna pull your car. Some nigga off the west side, cause nigga, I grew up on the number streets. I'm off the west side, and ain't no motherfucker on no yard gonna say shit to me, slick east or west. Right? It's respect. I'm gonna respect the east side motherfuckers. I'm respect the west side motherfuckers. I ain't gonna put myself in no trick bag. Cause you got whole niggas on both sides. Mm. Both sides. That's the key. That's the key. Bring <laughs> the bell on that. <laughs> bring the oh, you definitely got whole niggas on both bring sides. Bring the fucking bell now. So I got, a, I got a direct question for both of y'all, bro. Right now in the city of Detroit, it says over 13,000 paid federal informants operate in the city of Detroit right Damn. now alone. That's a real number. You got motherfuckers just telling on motherfucker without no regard. Listen. So, and then we also have something called gangster rats now. We got motherfuckers in the city of Detroit and across, I'm assuming across every urban environment across the country. We got niggas now who telling on the motherfucker who can tell. Do every, every part of telling 
point the finger, set a nigga up, line a nigga up, right? Go to trial to on the stand, and these niggas still out here. When I was coming up, if you was a rat, you had to move. You can't just be still out running around up a sloppy crab, <laughs> hanging out, smiling in the nigga face. You couldn't just do that. Nowadays, we live in an era now where the niggas who rats, they just still, they don't even go nowhere. They just still stay here. Explain they to party. me. They party and they, 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 they circle them bigger. Right. You know what I'm saying? Explain to me what the fuck is going on that with that, Mo. I, I have absolutely no idea. I keep my circle small, bro. I keep my circle small. I don't know nothing about no motherfuckers hanging out. I don't go to no sloppy crabs and none of that other shit. So I don't know nothing about none of that shit. I wouldn't trust myself in them places. I might slap a motherfucker. I don't need to be in public with, with, with people that's ignorant and fools and rats and all that shit. I'm just a fuck crab. I don't fuck around with them. I don't know nothing about what nobody doing. Long as the motherfucker ain't on my line, dog face, I don't give a fuck. Bert, huh? What, what, what you gotta say about these niggas around here doing this goddamn hot shit and they and they, they, they ain't getting pressed up out of town? You said what, man? What you say? What you got? These niggas around here telling like a motherfucker now. What you gotta say about these niggas who tell it outright and still get the chest stuck out like how? And you better not say I did it, and you, you better not say anything to me about it. It ain't my business. They ain't telling me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a gangster ass nigga they turn on, they gotta do the gangster ass shit too. Right. Clean your house. <laughs> that ain't my job. Hey, nigga, that shit come with you know that shit. Girl. I ain't no nigga, I ain't no nigga politic, man. Nigga, for me to for me to put a rat out there right now, you hear me? A nigga show me his paperwork. Nigga has some more paperwork for me to put the rat out there. Cause now I make this rat dangerous to me. Mm-hmm. He gonna go tell the people I'm pressing him. I'm doing this and then have me fucked up. So that's his business. He's trying to he trying to put me in his hookup. I don't mm -hmm. want to be engaged to that whole ass shit. That's mm -hmm. the man business. Make them take it up. You know how they gonna do it? You know what I'm saying? I don't mm -hmm. want to be. Hey, that's hey, that's for you, that's for you to do. You the re, you you doing the report. You the, you the interview. That's for you to do. You ain't nothing wrong with what you're doing. If you know a motherfucker rat and you want to put them out there, what's the problem? They no. shouldn't be ratting. Right. That's my view. If you don't want to be put out there, don't rat. I'm saying this, man. You hear me? If a nigga and a nigga paperwork, right? Mm -hmm. And they got and they close friends or whatever. They've been partying and yelling and getting all this motherfucking money together. Right. You hear me? That's his job. You hear me? And they roll on each other. And I want them to make a circle. I'm just a motherfucking old. I'm just a nigga watching a motherfucking video from outside looking in, nigga. But I don't mm -hmm. know if that nigga ran. I don't know what the fuck the niggas got going on. So I ain't gonna say shit. Right. You get it? Right. All that I would do is probably stay away from both of them motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, hey, listen, that's about, I'm gonna tell you something, right? If you, if you tell me, if John tells Jim that Stan told on him, and Stan is still on the street with John and Jim. Right, that's the issue. I'm looking at. I'm looking at. It ain't pushing the issue. It ain't pushing no issue. Yeah, right? that's what that's that. So it, it's basically me, right? I'm just doing some cleanup man work for some ho ho ass niggas. He, them niggas worse than a rat. Right. The the nigga the, the nigga who listen. Let me tell you something, Spud. If 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 I tell you that Sam told on me. And Sam's still out here moving around. Yeah, you ain't even trying to smack the nigga. Then now, now you telling me, right? Why, why, why am I telling you? They, they can tell me shit because they know I get excited about certain yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you tell so me. They ain't want me to bro, you, know, you know what I'm saying? They want you to be the fall guy. Yeah, they want to throw a nigga in a yeah. trick, man. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about who. Hey, <laughs> you told oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you got some cooking to do. <laughs> I can't run no cookie with you. <laughs> right. Nigga. <coughs> right, nigga. You were fucking about me right in the hotel. <coughs> First of all, we know it's part of the game. We know that. We understand that's part of the game. You tuned into the best. It's Dogface TV on YouTube. Press gang officials in the motherfucking building, man. And hey, listen, man. It's been a pleasure talking to them boys. We're going to come back for part two. Uh, we're going to make it happen. 
we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna save this part. We're gonna come back for part two. We're gonna drop the whole motherfucking thing. It's Dog Face TV live on YouTube. Loops the whole press game, man. It's a beautiful situation. Let's go.